Hey guys, so this is Miss Turner here, and hopefully you're watching this video on Tuesday, January 5th. Um, so if you've already looked at the student assignment chart, then you can see that you actually have two videos to watch today, as well as a quiz on what we've done so far with decimals. Um, so this is the first video you should be watching. After this video, go ahead and take your quiz because everything on that quiz is just kind of wrapping up what I'm going to be showing you in this video today. Um, and then after your quiz, you'll have another video to watch. And that's where we're going to start um, talking about different ways that we can actually write decimals, um, especially focusing on expanded form. Uh, so again, your goals today in math are to watch this video first, then you're going to take a decimals quiz, and then you're going to have another video to watch. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with this video. It's going to be pretty short and sweet. Uh, so a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to need your fifth grade math notebook. Um, if you look in the packet of papers that I gave you before we left school in December, uh, then you're also going to need this paper as well. You're going to need scissors, a glue stick, and something to write with. Now, if you don't have scissors and a glue stick, a stapler will also do the trick or even a piece of tape. Um, and if you don't have scissors or tape or a stapler, then that's perfectly fine. You can just write directly onto this sheet of paper everything that you need. Uh, just stick it in your math notebook. And even though it will be loose, uh, just make sure you don't lose it. And then whenever you guys come back to school, then I can certainly help you get that inserted into your notebook. Okay. All right, guys. So make sure you have all of those materials and let's go ahead and get started. Um, so first thing we need to do here is we're going to cut out this paper right here um, and we're just going to cut around the perimeter. Um, so nothing too super fancy here. I'm just kind of cutting around the outside edge. Okay and then we will insert this into our notebook. Okay, so when you're done cutting, it's going to look something like this. So all three of these rows of decimal grids are still connected. All I did was just simply cut around the outside perimeter. Uh, so remember, because this is a pre-recorded video, you can pause at any time if I am moving too fast and you need to catch up. Okay. Alrighty guys. So we're going to get ready to insert that into our notebook. Before we do, however, uh, let's go ahead and label our header. So our header here is going to be decimal grids. Uh, so you should have learned in your a Zoom meeting yesterday that these are called decimal grids and basically it's just a picture. It's a picture format uh, showing the value of a decimal uh, but what we can do is use these pictures or use these grids and we can write the equivalent fraction or even the equivalent decimal. So decimal grids and what we're going to see today are decimal grids with whole numbers. Decimal grids with whole numbers. So what you should have done in your Zoom meeting yesterday was look at several decimal grids, but all of the decimal grids, and I'm just going to show you this really quickly from my Zoom meeting yesterday, um, all of your decimal grids, you'll see that they were fractions that were less than one whole. So like five tenths, if we were to put that on a number line, it would fall between zero and one. Even the same thing with 87 hundredths. If we were to put that on a number line, it will fall in between zero and one. Same thing with six tenths. Now that doesn't change whenever we convert these fractions into their equivalent decimals. So five tenths is equal to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is still less than one whole. 87 hundredths is equal to 0 0.87. And 0 0.87, we would read that as 87 hundredths. That is still less than one whole. And then same thing with 6 tenths, which is equal to 0 0.6. That is less than one whole. And you'll notice here one thing that all of these decimal grids have in common is that there's only one decimal grid right? There's only one decimal grid for 0 0.5 that you need to read. There's only one decimal grid for 0 0.87 that you need to read. Well, I'm going to take this away now. And if you look at the decimal grids you have here in front of you, there are two decimal grids on the top row. 
two decimal grids on the bottom row and then two decimal grids on that row as well. And so that means, you know, we're really not just going to be looking at something like 0 0.6 or 0 0.87. I'm going to show you how when you have two or more decimal grids together, uh, the value of the decimal grid is actually showing you more than one whole. All right, so before we do that, let's go ahead and glue this down in our notebook. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back here. And then when you glue it down, make sure you do glue it down correctly. So you want it to look something like this. Uh, so we have a hundredths grid here. And right beside it, we have a tenths grid. And then the second row, we have two hundredths grids. And then the bottom row, we have a hundredths grid and a tenths grid right beside it. And then one thing that might help you just to kind of keep this a little bit more organized is in between the two sets of decimal grids. If you will just draw a line here. Okay, that way you can really see what it is that we are focusing on. All right, now these decimal grids are blank, uh, so we are going to have to shade them in, and I'm going to show you how to shade in these grids. Uh, so let's start with our first example here. We're going to be reading these two grids that are side by side to figure out what is the value shown. And remember, we can write the value as a fraction or also a decimal, and we are gonna do both today. Um, on your NC check-in and on your quiz today, and on a quiz that you guys are gonna have this Friday, I know, lots of testing, right? Um, you're going to have questions very similar to this, where it's gonna give you decimal grids, and sometimes even two decimal grids side by side, and you're gonna be asked to show what the value of it is. Um, and I will tell you, on the NC check-in, this is always one of those questions where you actually have to type in your answer, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start with the first one here, um, and I'm gonna show you how I want you guys to shade this in. And I'm not going to tell you exactly how to shade it in uh, because that would be doing some of the work for you. I'm just going to show you and I basically just want you to copy it into your notebook. Okay, so go ahead and shade that one in to look like that. And then if you look at the grid right beside it, we're going to shade that one in as well. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and make sure you shade yours in just like that. Okay, and then let's go ahead and start with writing the fraction here. Now, in this case, it's not going to be a fraction like five tenths or six tenths or nine tenths. In this case, we should actually be writing a mixed number. And remember, a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction written together to make a new number. Now, why is it going to be a mixed number? Well, it's gonna be a mixed number because if you look at this first decimal grid, how much of this first decimal grid is shaded? Well, the whole thing, right? The whole decimal grid is shaded. So here, and if you want to, you can write this on your grid, the whole decimal grid is shaded and then we have part of another decimal grid. So if you'll notice, that sounds very similar to the way that we read a mixed number. We read a mixed number by saying one and one half, two and three fourths five and one fourth, right? We have that word and in there to separate the whole from the fraction. Same thing here. We have a whole grid shaded and then part of another one. So if we were to start by writing this as a mixed number, how many holes do we have shaded here? We have one hole shaded. So we're gonna write one as our whole number. That's how many holes are shaded. If we had two holes, two decimal grids that look just like this, then this would be the number two here, right? And then let's go ahead and look at the decimal grid right over here. Now, as you can see for this one, the whole thing has not been shaded in. Only part of it has been shaded in. So this is where your fraction comes in. Now, to figure out what our fraction should look like, how has this decimal grid been partitioned? Has it been partitioned into tenths? Has it been partitioned into hundredths? Well, for this one, it has been partitioned into tenths. We can see 10 parts. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's going to be my denominator. And then our numerator, that's just how many parts you've shaded in. And we can see one, two, three parts have been shaded in. So as a mixed number, I get one and three tenths. Now, we're not so much focusing on the fraction part of this. We're focusing more on the decimal part. Uh, but for some of you who maybe you can't look at this right now and see what the decimal is, writing it as a mixed number and then converting it into a decimal is going to be a strategy that you can use to really help you out. All right, so now to write this as a decimal, we have one whole. So that's one. And we have three tenths of another whole. So remember, the decimal point here actually represents the word and. So when you look at these decimal grids and see one and three tenths, then that means there should be a decimal after the one because you said and before you actually write the three tenths. Now, if we have three tenths, what that means is that we need to have a three in the tenths place value column. The first column to the right of the ones place, that is your tenths place value column. So we're gonna put a three there. So one and three tenths as a mixed number, this is how it looks as a decimal, 1.3, 1.3. And we would read that as one and three tenths because we have a three in the tenths place value column. Okay, let's go ahead now and let's look at our next example. All right, so let's look at number two here. Same thing, we're gonna go ahead and shade this in together. Okay, so let's just shade this in. And you'll notice that because the whole thing, like in this first example, because the whole thing is shaded in, it doesn't necessarily matter if it was partitioned into tenths or hundredths because it's just one hole that's shaded in. A hole is a hole no matter what. You know, a whole apple or a whole pizza is still a whole thing, a whole object. Uh, the only time it would matter is if you wanted to express this whole as a fraction, in which case you would need to know, is it 10 tenths or is it 100 one hundredths, okay? All right, so for example number two, go ahead and shade in your first decimal grid to look like that. And then let's go ahead and start shading in the next decimal grid. And again, I'm not telling you exactly how much to shade in. I just want you to look at my model here. I do want you to count some of this for yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, guys, so go ahead and get that shaded in. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did in the first example. We're going to start with writing the mixed number followed by writing the equivalent decimal. Uh, so let's go ahead and start reading this left to right, much like you would, you know, read the, the sentences in a book. We read it from left to right. So we're going to start here on the left side. And how much of this has been shaded in? Well, that's easy. The whole thing, right? The whole has been shaded in. And how many holes have been shaded in? Just one. So that tells us in our mixed number, we have one hole. And then come over here, what do we have left over? We can see in the second decimal grid, the whole thing has not been shaded in only part of the whole. So this is where your fraction is going to come in. All right, so let's start with our denominator. Looking at the second decimal grid, how many parts are there all together? You certainly would not want to count these one by one. That's going to take too long. So you can either look at this and say, okay, well, each column has 10 square units in it. So I can just count by tens, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Or you could even look at this as like an array and you could say, okay, I've got 10 square units in the first row, well, in every row, and I've got 10 square units in every column, multiply 10 times 10, and what do you get? You get 100. And then of course, I'm sure most of you, you've seen enough of these, you could just look at this and go, oh, this first one up here is partitioned into tenths, and this one is partitioned into 100s. Either way, our decimal is going to be, or our um, denominator, I'm sorry, our denominator is going to be 100. 
And then for our numerator, again, we're just going to count how many parts have been shaded in. Now, again, you practiced this in, there's, in your uh, Zoom video yesterday. So what I would recommend doing is counting by tens, where you see that full columns have been shaded in. And then when you get to this column right here, where the whole thing has not been shaded in, just simply start counting by ones. So for example, we could do this, 10, 20, 30. Now count by ones, 31, 32, 33. So we get one and 33 hundredths. Now that's writing this as a mixed number. We want to convert this now into a decimal. So again, we're gonna start with our whole. We had one whole. And so decimal point and part of another decimal grid shaded in. Now, this decimal needs to read as one and 33 hundredths. So, all we simply have to do here is write 33, and the last digit that we have ends in the hundredths place value column. So, whatever your last digit, wherever it is, that's the last word you need to say. So, since this last digit is in the hundredths place value column, hundredths is going to be the last word that comes out of my mouth when I read this. So this is one and 33, and then we say hundredths, and that matches our mixed number above, so we know that we have the correct decimal. Okay, you're ready for one more? Let's go ahead and do one more together. All right, so let's do number three here. All right, so again, if you will start shading. Okay, so if you'll go ahead and shave that in, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, if you will look at the model right beside it, let's go ahead and shave that one in as well. There you go. All right, guys, so go ahead and get your shaded in, please, to match mine, and we will get started here on the last example. All right, so we're going to start by writing this as a mixed number, and then we will write this as a decimal. All right, so let's go ahead and again, we're going to start on the left side. Just like when you read a book, we're going to go left to right. All right, so starting here, what do you see shaded in in this first decimal grid? You see the whole thing shaded in. And how many holes do we see shaded in? Just one, right? So we just have one hole shaded in. And then when we come over here, what do we have shaded in here? So you can see that this decimal grid has been partitioned into tenths. These are what those little ten sticks or tens bars looks like. And we do have ten of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that would be your denominator. That's what this decimal grid has been partitioned into is tenths. All right. And then how many do we have shaded in? We have one, two, three, four parts that have been shaded in. So that means we have one and four tenths shaded in. So we just need to make sure our answer looks like one and four tenths. So that's easy to start off with a mixed number. One and four tenths, right? And then we go to write that as a decimal. So we have one whole shaded in, and this is where the decimal point comes in. And since we have four tenths, we just need to have a four in the tenths place value column. The tenths place value column is the very first column right after the decimal point. It goes tenths, and then hundreds and then thousands. And since we have a four in the tenths place, that's what we're gonna show here, 1.4. And this is how you would read one and four tenths, 1.4. All righty guys, so that's all we need here in our notebook. Um, right after this video, I recommend you head on over and you take your 
decimal values quiz, which looks just like this. Uh, so same thing you guys have been used to seeing in the past. You're going to type in your name, select your homeroom teacher, and then here you have um, about 10 decimal grids that I'm going to have you read and select the best answer. And you will notice, look at number 12 here, some of these look very similar to the ones that we just did. Um, and there's actually 14 questions here, so they're valued at about seven points each. Uh, just make sure you read your answer choice this carefully like here in number 13 there's a big difference in 0 0.3 and 0 0.03 uh, so just make sure you think about your place value columns after the decimal it's always tenths hundreds thousands so if you need a digit in the hundreds place value column and you don't have any tenths then just put a zero in the tenths place and then write how many hundreds you actually have okay all right guys so this is where i leave you uh, go ahead and take your quiz right now while everything is fresh in your brain and then click back and you're going to have another video to watch all right guys go ahead and take your quiz good luck